All right, we're back with Zach again, working on the Ram for the second time in a month. Imagine that. <laughs> and we're taking the, you said the engine oil cooler off? Correct, yeah, in, engine oil cooler. Um, it also houses the oil filter. So it's oil filter adapter, oil filter housing, engine oil cooler. It's kind of all one one full piece on this particular vehicle. Or this particular engine, I should say. This engine is put into a lot of different vehicles. There we go. So we gotta take the engine cover, the intake, put them off. It's not listening to me. How am I hitting? What am I not getting? Did you get that clamp on that? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. loose. There's gonna be a couple, uh, like, it uses a ball that, like, sticks up, and then it'll have, like, a rubber grommet that. Snaps, down snaps kind of snaps down on yeah. it, and so there's there's another one somewhere that I'm just not seeing. That's where it is. So now comes the fun stuff. So this one does not have the bracket, which is good. That's that's helpful. We're just kind of removing, for instance, this is a positive crank case ventilation hose that has to come off. As you can see here, this part, that's the intake plenum, that's part number one that's got to come off. Then we have to remove directly underneath it is the actual intake manifold that has to be removed. And then all the way down in the middle of the V of the engine, that is where the uh, oil cooler slash oil filter adapter is housed. Come on now. Listen here. We kind of are at home. And <laughs> we're trying it. Wait. So yeah, I'm a semi-professional though. <laughs> <laughs> Semi. Yeah. I mean, I get paid to do it, but you know, I could make more money somewhere else. That's just gonna stay there. So then we're gonna take these last hands there. I didn't do what I don't even have. Bracketry on this side. Phenomenal. A lot of these engines have a bracket that actually wraps up from down here around that uh, valve cover and clamps this side of this intake uh, plenum down and it's not incredibly difficult but it is much more of a pain to remove than what it is not there. Nice. So we don't have to dig with that. Yeah, alright, so we don't have to dig with it. And Just a little safety clip, if you will. Makes it more difficult to actually pull, off. pull the clip. It's it still actually clips on. If you hear, listen. Right. It still clicks. You just put that in there to keep it from coming off. To keep it to keep it from being clickable. <laughs> to keep it, from, you know, make it harder for you to take it off so that you are more prone to take it to a professional to do this job. Yeah, really, they do it with everything. I mean, quite literally, every connector. Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, you know, Fiat. These guys are really, really, really notorious for that. For putting those... I, like I said, they're kind of like a... I mean, it's just like an anti-tamper clip, if you will. Right. They are really notorious for that. I don't know why they're so notorious for that. You're more apt to bring it into the dealership, then. Yep, and spend money and... And then, you know, if you dick around with it, they say, oh, you, I can see this thing's been broken here. So that voids your warranty. Yep, yeah, that's that's actually another good point. That's probably one of the main reasons. There you go. Take that, punk. Like I said, I mean, everybody kind of does a little bit, uh, General Motors. But what they do 
at least in my experience with General Motors, it seems like things that are a little bit more, I don't say important, but important. I mean, you know, kind of like without it, the engine stops running kind of stuff. Right. They'll put that on there versus stuff that is just like a temperature sensor, for instance, where the engine won't necessarily stop running. It may not run optimally, but it'll still run. They may not put that anti-tamper clip on there. Right now, we're just taking these. Ouch. Nuts off of just a couple brackets that kind of hold the plenum in place. Probably, arguably, from an engineering standpoint, not entirely necessary. I suppose maybe to keep vibration in the plenum down. But over time, it might end up cracking and breaking, but I have never once seen one of these that didn't have those brackets reinstalled have any issues. Well, plenum is made entirely of plastic. It doesn't weigh anything, so there's not really any stress on the mounting surface, which is over here. Right. But they deem it necessary. Well, the plastic is way more apt to deform than the metal parts would be. That might be why. Maybe, yeah. And like I said, I mean, you know, I can imagine it's vibration, the weight of everything kind of over here, and you're just asking to have a problem, I guess, over time. So there were four of those little nuts on these brackets. Four of those nuts on those bra on that particular bra bracket set. There's two brackets, one on the kind of front of the intake and then one on the rear. Um, like I was kind of talking about earlier, the bracket that runs over here is not is not there, which is really nice. One thing that you will have, so again, this engine is installed in many, many vehicles. The Dodge Grand Caravan uh, utilizes this exact same engine. Um, Chrysler, Town Country, Chrysler 200, I mean, Dodge Avenger, they installed this engine in, in all kinds of stuff. So, because of the configuration, because of the way that the engine is mounted in this vehicle, because it's front, you know, an all wheel drive or, you know, rear wheel drive truck, they changed this intake system up a little bit. And so, that's why it'll be different in different applications. You'll just have a little bit of a different. Uh, Mounting, I say mounting system, but bracket system because this intake will be slightly modified or changed in such a way that it will actually fit. And due to that, different brackets won't be needed or will be needed. So we have there, what, eight on this? Eight, uh, maybe? You know what, maybe I don't, hold on, let me think so. One, two. There's no fourth one, but it's way down there. I think it's, I think it might be seven. No, I think it might be eight. I think you might be right. I think it might be eight. I need to come off, but it makes it so I don't have to disconnect that set of wires right there. So as opposed to disconnecting it, I can just leave them connected, leave them in, leave them in the bracket, and just remove the bracket. Makes life a little easier, less of a chance of breaking the plastic clip that holds it to the bracket. Do me a favor. Yep. Red set of pliers. Um, not needle nose. I guess I don't even know what you call them. Hog nose. These. Yeah, those are. 
don't even know what you call them. Just call them pliers, I, Yeah, just regular pliers, I guess. So there's another wire racket over here. Yeah, it's just a... Oh, that hose. Yeah. I just... One of the, honestly, that's a quick little tip trick. These will always... I mean, basically any hose that's been sitting on this plastic or, you know, a metal nipple, if you will, will more or less fuse itself. Right. It's been sitting on there for... I mean, it's 2013, so 10 years, essentially, right? Right. It's been sitting on there for 10 years. It's never been removed. So what I always do is I take them. Obviously, you don't need to really, really crunch down, but just a little bit of pressure and spin and kind of do that. Loose. And it just breaks it loose, and it yeah. makes it a lot easier to remove. So you're not pulling and pulling and fighting and fighting. It just makes it a lot easier to, to get it off of there. It's kind of one of those things that you learn when you're mechanicking. The easiest way to do stuff. Yes. Another little wiring harness there, wiring bracket. Yeah, this one's for the throttle body. It's got another one of those little safety clips. Doesn't want to come off, of course, so we'll just cheat it. Now that should be removable. No rat's nest in there. Yes, sir. Nice. You got any bit? Any, any little babies in there? Nope. Doesn't look like that's old. Man, they chewed that up good. Yeah, may want to get a shot back, I presume. Yeah. What we don't want is any of that stuff to fall down inside, in the, in, in, yeah. inside the intake. Let me go grab that. Yes, sir. So, so we got the the intake plenum off, right? And now I'm just again more more of those little safety clip things. This is for our fuel injector because the fuel injector is actually installed into the intake manifold and rather than removing the fuel rail or there's a fuel rail on either side right uh, rather than moving the fuel rail we just remove the injector harness and then when we pull this intake manifold off i just take it up and i kind of lay it off to the side so that you don't have to remove the fuel rail or disconnect your fuel and get kind of gasoline everywhere i mean it's not really that big of a deal to, to do that if you absolutely had to but again, it's just one of those steps that's not really necessary and it just makes for a cleaner job. I mean, and I'm sure that Evan can attest right now, you can still smell gasoline. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, not really that bad, though. Exactly. So when I open it up, I mean, you, you can smell a little bit of gasoline, but it would have been, or it would definitely be substantially worse. I mean, you know, you open this up and you've got probably sitting right now, it's probably about 45 to 50 pounds of pressure uh, per square inch. So that fuel is sitting there just waiting to spray out. It'll spray out. And when it everywhere. does, it gets a little everywhere and it stinks. I mean, you know. Yeah. It just smells like gasoline. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a real big fan of being covered in gasoline. Uh, it's not necessarily a fun thing. I mean, you know, there could be times, I guess, but uh, it's not, not one of my favorite things to do. I mean, there's a kink for everything. <laughs> Some, somewhere on the internet, somebody covers themselves in gasoline. Probably makes $1,000 a day doing it to sell it to creepy old men. I'm not near pretty enough for that, though. Yeah, I don't think I'd still be covering myself in gas. <laughs> It'd take a lot. Maybe two grand a day. I mean, how long are we keeping the gasoline on us, though? That's the question. Yeah. yeah but, I mean, you can't really get that off. Well. I mean, that smell's going to be on you. It's going to be on you for, yeah, for a substantial amount of time. Actually, kind of funny story. So, you know, I was a kid, maybe, you know, 13, 14 years old. My dad had found a little old 1980s it was called a honda express a little 50 cc little you know scooter yep and bought it for me for like 50 bucks so i was you know going through and kind of getting everything cleaned up and trying to get the dang thing running right and so i had taken the carburetor off because that's something you do when you're trying to get something running right and put it in carburetor cleaner it's like it's i mean it's a pretty caustic chemical that definitely has a certain smell and that evening, we had pizza for dinner. And at the time, you know, being 13, 14 years old, I didn't like pizza crust. So my mom asked to eat my pizza crust. I said, sure, you can have it. Bear in mind, obviously, I'd clean my hands after. She's like, this tastes weird. 
and I taste it, I'm like, oh yeah, that's that car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, Ma. Yeah, sorry. It's probably that. It's probably not good for you. Kind of funny, I thought. You know, feeding your mom car, cleaning it. It was, it was not. Uh, again, pretty caustic. I mean, it's you know, it's yeah. built. You're made to you know move carbon and varnish from old gasoline. It's just nasty stuff. I mean, it is. It's nasty stuff. So now we've got all fuel injectors disconnected. We'll pull this intake manifold off. So we got several bolts along that. Mm -hmm. There are, I think, four on either side. Uh, so why don't you do this yourself? Me? Yeah. Sis. I'm an idiot. Well, they, I, I mean, what makes you think that I'm not an idiot? Well, the thing is, you've already got this apart in about 20 minutes. I would have or I would have been probably on the first bolt <laughs> and already broken two of those wiring harnesses. Yeah, you know what? I will say this. One thing about the wiring harnesses, they are they can be brittle, but most of them in nowadays, they're pretty tough. Yeah, even an idiot's got to know his limits. Yeah, I suppose that's true. I like there are four. I knew that guy couldn't find the damn thing in the first place. I mean, that really speaks to this, because I will literally try anything but this kind of stuff. Autom I mean, real small automotive stuff, I'll do it. Well, you and if I had to, listen, if I was just dead broke, 100%, I'm going to be out here doing this myself. Doing this, crying yeah. and cussing yeah. and yeah. having fun. And I'd probably pull it off, but yeah, you would. it's just not worth it. I, see, you know what? There's a, there's a couple questions I've, I've received, you know, how do you do that, you know, whatever. Well, I would plug something in wrong or something like that. It's like, well, I mean... 99.99 percent .99 of this you know that this this plug here it would fit in that plug but it can't reach yeah. you, you know what i mean right so 99.9 percent .99 of it can only really be put together one way it can't you, you can't screw it up for lack of a better term i mean obviously you know if you forget to plug something in yeah sure that can screw something up but for the most part i idiot proof is maybe not the right word but for the most part, it is very, very difficult to put it together wrong. It, this, for instance, this intake manifold, right? When we put it back on, it can only go back on one way. It, it can't be put back together right. backwards or in a way that, in, a, in, a, in such a way that would make it so that it does not run. Bunch of dead daddy long legs in there. Yeah, you'll have that. It's kind of an, it's an oddly specific <laughs> thing to have there, yeah. So yeah, like I said, obviously, you know, you just kind of lay this off to the side so as to not... Is that plastic, too? What? This? Oh, manifold. Yeah. Yes. That blows my mind that the intake is plastic. Yeah, intake manifold is plastic. This this part that we're replacing is, is plastic as well. Can you see the part from yep. up here? Uh, sort of. So you can see kind of the top. So this this right here is actually what your oil and your coolant runs through yeah. to cool the oil. It's actually kind of attached to the part that we are after. Okay. Uh, that part, this will be removed and it will be, you know, put onto the new one. As you can see here, you see all that, all that gunk and crap back there? Yeah. It just shows you how bad it was leaking. I mean, you can yeah. see down oh, in there. It's leaving spots in the driveway. Mm -hmm. it's, all, it's all dirty and nasty. Okay, we'll have to do Shot back some more there. vacuum. All right, man. Um, oh, yeah, definitely. Eat now. Where's the nugget? So we get harness for a temperature sensor, you said? Mm-hmm. That would be... Uh, you know what? I don't remember if that one's oil temp or just... I mean, I really don't remember. Well, we can just sit here and talk about it, but I do not remember. Regardless, it's got to come off and it's off. Yeah, that's right. all that matters. This thing is held on by five volts. Now, I always like to do this because it allows air into that, and then actually, you know, it'll drain. It just has like a. So what is that? So this is where your oil filters actually help. Oh. You're just loosening the brake of any vacuum on. Correct, and that what that allows is the oil to drain, and it makes a little bit less. I, I say, a little bit less of a mess because it will still be a pretty large mess, no matter what you do. Come on. Well, 
this will all be replaced. We've got a new one of these, we've got a new filter, and the whole new plastic housing as well. Just let that sit there, just like yeah, I'll so. I'll set it over here. Yeah, it's fine. Just right there. So now, five. These are actually what's called external torques. If I remember correctly, uh, the size, I think is an E8. Again, this is just shooting in the dark because I do not remember exactly what size they are. But an external Torx, if anybody's ever seen a Torx bit, they look kind of like a star. Well, this would be like the opposite of that particular star. Yeah. Just, just that size. So we ended up using a, what do you say? It's a, so it's a quarter inch drive, quarter inch socket. Uh, this one is 12 point, but actually again, six point would work just fine. Um, the E10 works with an eight millimeter, which is equal to what? Five sixteenths of an inch? Um, yeah, five sixteenths of an inch. And I did not have a quarter inch drive quarter inch socket with me. Actually, that might not be true. It might be in there somewhere, but this was quick and easy to find. So five bolts, this thing's out. We've got the actual little pressure sensor down there as well. That's got to come off, but because of the orientation of it, it's going to be easier to remove the actual uh, cooler and then remove that that uh, connector because it's kind of it's upside down it just makes it a little bit more difficult there's that white five gallon over there is that is that open you can toss it in there and this is where the mess goes hear that bubbling yep that's all crap coming out of it Is. I'm just gonna break you. All right. Do me a favor. Yep. In that toolbox, it's got a green handle. Looks like a pistol grip with a long wire on it. Yep. Hose clamp pliers. Nice. This is for those hose clamps that are spring loaded, for instance. That guy right there. Hold on just a second. Yep. Just like so. And then one of the nice things about this. Oh, that's awesome. It actually clicks and holds it as well. Yeah, that's cool. I've never seen those before. Yeah, they're really nice. Really, really nice to have. Especially when you're trying to get down into places like this, they can be incredibly yeah. helpful. Um, where did I put it? Looks like you need air in your tire, though. I need air in my tire bad. I've been driving it on like 20 PSI for weeks now. I every every time I borrowed this truck, I've had to put air in the tires. Yeah. <laughs> every single time. I don't have time for that. Well, yeah, he's got a leak. None of that. Maybe tire. a date too. Like Anybody get that? No. <laughs> I didn't. I was just. I was, I was, I that was a good. That was, I was a good joke. Staring at all the a leak, the leak and a date. They're oh, they're both vegetables. That's a dad joke. And leak is an onion. Well, yeah, I mean, same basic thing. A date is a fruit. Yeah, but, you know, yeah, it's come on, whatever. You know, come on. You know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> That's a funny joke. Fuck all y'all. I thought it was funny. Yeah, thank you. Somebody did. I didn't did. hear you until you refused. Whatever. I was really, I was like zoned staring at the, uh, the leaves that were accumulated there. I was waiting on some small woodland animal. Out. <laughs> well, we didn't pull a rat's nest yeah, out. Definitely rat's had a nest out. Decent, decent size. I mean, I seem bigger, but... I've heard that in a hotel room before. Uh, <laughs> that's his new favorite thing. So we got the, this is the cooler out, right? Mm-hmm. This is the old one. This is the old one. So we got to take this metal box off of there. What is this metal part again? That is the actual cooling mechanism there? Correct. Oh, come on. 
So we got it in the vise so we can remove some of these fixtures and stuff. Yeah, this would be... Oh, no, new one comes with that. Yeah. You know, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to grab it. Hmm. This one's got one that one doesn't have. That one, too. Weird. Older design, I guess. Got him. Very different. Shoot. Should still work, but I wonder why it's so dang different. I mean, it really shouldn't matter because you got your gaskets are still in the same places, and really all you gotta do is use these for. Correct, yeah. But it just weirds me out. I don't know why it's this different. I don't know if they gave me the wrong part or what. So that part didn't work, the cooler wouldn't fit on it. Apparently there's a new design for these housings, so we had to order the whole thing together with the cooler. But we got that in, we're back four days later, ready to put that uh, put that thing back in, hopefully. So everything is cleaned up so far to an extent. We've kind of cleaned the, you know, we'll get a lot of oil and coolant dropping into the V of the engine. Uh, you don't really want to leave that there. I was kind of explaining to Evan here earlier that you know, the next guy may see it and say, oh man, I've got a big old leak, when in fact, it's just your mess from the last time you you did the job. And so, of course, it's a good idea to clean up after yourself when at all possible. Of course, you're never going to get it 100% perfect, but a good 90% is going to be good enough. Where did I put my light? Oh, this one will do the trick. You got a headlamp if you want that. Uh, it's just, all right. I got a headlamp somewhere too. I don't even know where it's at now that I think about it. This is a little old mechanics trick. Uh, brake clean and air. It's going to be messy, but clean at the same time. I don't know how to explain it. So you spray your brake clean, or whatever the heck you want. You may want to clean up. And then you got to come in right behind it, and headphone users beware. Hit it with some compressed air. What we should probably do. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug off the holes for the coolant because that's what's kind of getting a little bit sprayed around. So this Look, is a new It's part. actually the same design as what you had previously. It is. It's new. actually not the updated design. It's the same design as what we had previously. Uh, just an updated because it is all aluminum as compared to plastic. What happens actually is over time the plastic warps. I mean, it obviously becomes brittle, can crack, but the main thing is warpage, and then... And doesn't keep the seal. Doesn't keep your seal. And, I mean, seals are important for keeping oil, coolant. Well, it shouldn't be an issue with the aluminum. No. No, yeah. These are these are pretty much a million mile parts. This is, you'll never have to ever do this again. So we're basically going to put this back in and reverse everything we did before as far as connecting everything back. Correct. We got new gaskets for the intake that came with this. We'll replace those, but... It's basically all just the opposite of what we've done so far at this point. Inflation is reversal of removal, as they say. Unless you're me doing it. 